Thank you, Gareth Ball, for joining. Thank you. Um, for doing this, it's really cool. Gareth, you're from South Africa. Have yeah. you, out uh, of curiosity, have you done any gigs in South Africa? So. No, actually, I, I, I haven't. I've never. Yeah, whenever, whenever I've go back, it's never. I've, yeah, I've, I've, ne I've never thought of doing it. Although I, I was considering doing it at the end of the year, but now with this whole COVID thing, um, yeah, that's going. That's gone out the window, and I'm not. Uh, yeah, I, I just hope there's a comedy scene back in South Africa. Um, once it's all over, I mean, there's there's a lot. Um, I mean, it's it's obviously hit everybody quite hard this COVID thing, but I know South Africa, it's particularly hit them quite hard, and, and the comedy scene's a lot smaller there than it is in the UK. So, um, yeah, it's it's definitely something I'd, I'd consider doing in the future. But um, yeah, and no, I've I've never done it. I'd, I'd I'd probably have to change my material quite a bit, because uh, obviously I'm a South African, um, but I'm living in the UK, so my you know the the, the, the material differs. Um, and I found that particularly in lockdown, when I was doing international gigs like in America, um, they, they didn't really get the references I was making. Yeah. Obviously, it was from a UK perspective. So, yeah. That's cool. And then, so it, it, is it interesting, like, doing that? Because people want to learn about, like, the UK or South Africa and some different places, like, sort of exchanging kind of, like, insights, really, isn't it? Almost to some different worlds. Well, pretty much, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, I think it's um, it's also been, it's, it's one of the few things that's been I think being being good about um, lockdown and the and the the Zoom gigs is I mean, you've probably found it yourself. You you I think you 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 meet a lot more people internationally because there are a lot of people signing in from all over the world. So you know you you're getting to just discover more ways. Well, I mean, London, you you do that too because you obviously the comedy scene's also very international. You know, I mean, London's a melting pot, but, uh, but, but I think that's where the Zoom gigs and the internet with the lockdown, it's, it's been good in that sense. One of, one of been the, been one of the few positives, I think. That's cool. And because and, and, it was just such a, it was a bit of a shock, like globally for everybody. How we all kind of was like, right, okay, lockdown online. What was um, the most kind of challenging thing for you, I think? Like, first approaching like, online gigs. What was the most challenging, would you say? Well, for, from our own online gig point of view, well, yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm, I'm quite, uh, with my performance, I'm quite interactive, but particularly, particularly in, the, in, the, in the first sort of, when I go on stage for the first minute or two, I like to, I find I get into the, the, the room or get a feel for the room easier if I, you know, interact with the audience or just make general observations about the room. Whereas I remember the first time I did a, a Zoom gig, I was just totally, I didn't know how to do that. I, um, I mean, I think I've adjusted. I've, I've found a way to do it now. I've, I've slowly adjusted. And I think I'm a lot more comfortable, but I just, I just found that really difficult, like trying to, you know, gauge where I'm at the room, where the audience are at. It, it was, it, yeah, I think from an interactive point of view, that, that was very difficult. But I think what's been good about it is I think you've, I find I've, I've probably had to sharpen up my, my material a bit more. I think before I was probably quite lazy uh, you know, I, I, I would rely on being interactive and improvising where I think within Zoom and online, you, you probably have to, well, yeah, I've definitely had to try and sharpen my material up a bit more and, and not just, you know, rely on what happens, you know, these funny little things and, and, and going out on a whim. So, yeah, so it's, it's been good it's, from that point of view. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point in a sense because I suppose, like, it's a comment that we, get, we go out there and we go, oh, okay, that's happening. So we can kind of find things and so, say, like, in the audience and make that kind of gel but when it feels more kind of we can't see what is much what's going on in the room it's a little different in the sense of how people are like sitting and behaving yeah that's a good point yeah i agree and were you tech savvy before all of this or was it a shop with technology it, de it depends what you mean by tech savvy uh i mean I, I, I work in an office uh i mean i, I work with a lot of like you know the, the, the usual applications like you know your 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 Microsoft Office and all of that. Uh, I mean, put it this way: I, I I don't think I've had to really. I mean, I, I I'd never used Zoom before. I didn't know what Zoom was. I mean, at, at work we don't use Zoom. We use Microsoft Teams, which is similar, but it's not quite as advanced. So, I suppose I to I, I to adapt a little. But I think I've I've, I've generally been okay with it. I, I mean, I, I think for somebody like you, it's probably a lot more a lot more difficult obviously running a gig I've, I've never run a gig of zoom so i think i'd i'd, I'd probably have to 
I, I, I'd have a lot to learn, or maybe I could learn in five minutes. The honest answer is I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 it is one of the things, and especially like, and Zoom is quite a big discovery, I think, for a lot of people. And suddenly, like, Zoom is almost like the next kind of Facebook for lockdown, almost, I think. Yeah. So, oh, okay, you know. Um, and, with, and with writing as well, are you saying, like, being, you feel like you need to be a little bit sharper and stuff, because it's kind of, you know, and I think we'll feel that. But with the inspiration for writing, like, getting material, do, is that more of a challenge, or do, is it just kind of drawing material from what you had and, like, editing and working on it? Or did you find it okay to write? In the in the in the be in the beginning, like with my material, I was actually just taking a lot of what I used before and sort of trying to modify it. But then, after a while, I suppose yeah, the, the um, it, it, I, I basically got my inspiration. I think a lot from. I mean, in the beginning, all you saw because a lot of my material before was a, lo a lot of sort of on pop culture, what's happening in the news. But in the beginning, I, I stopped watching the news because all that you saw in the news was COVID, and it was yeah. it was it was depressing the hell out of me. But then, after a while, you know, I just noticed little things like you know, I, I noticed Boris's hair was getting like even more funky than it usually is. <laughs> uh, I mean. Daniel Radcliffe was coming out of nowhere, you know, making criticisms out on J.K. Rowling, uh, and yeah, and then 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 you just saw like weird stuff like Madonna singing in a bath of rose petals, and I suppose I was, I just sort of started looking at Twitter and stuff, and yeah, I suppose it's just yeah, then then, then that's just how I sort of found some inspiration. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sort of that's mixing up a little bit with sort of online and personal life and what how we can do that as well with the um with the sort of boris and i like that you mentioned him like this hair going kind of like crazy i mean how many children do you think boris had just that question i don't know what, what 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 like officially i think he is <laughs> apparently well i don't know well is it officially or unofficially a six i mean, the man is virile i say that much i mean um yeah i mean i don't know it's just like and he's not like it's not the most. Attra well, I mean, I'm 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 not attracted to men, so I wouldn't know what an attractive. I mean, I don't know. I I I I used to think I knew what an attractive man was, but I mean, I don't know. Boris, he he seems to get around. So yeah, no, he's 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 got something. I don't know what it is, but he's got something. Now I'll say that. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, and with the sort of uh, what kept you, it is good. Obviously, the online things. What was it that particularly kept you safe kind of through lockdown? Was it particular like the sport or writing or sort of online things? Anything kind of? I think it was basically, in a word, it's a it's a very simple answer, but the internet. It's it's a, yeah. it's a crazy it's a crazy thing to say, but like just yeah. like uh, I mean, because I was thinking if this happened thirty years ago, I mean, I'm just thinking thirty years ago. I was I was I was a kid, but. We didn't like we didn't have the internet, so I, I mean, I, I, and we didn't have ways of communicating with one another. So yeah, I think the internet. I mean, you know, you have all these apps like you know the Zoom, WhatsApp. You know, I could I could at least keep in contact with family and friends. Uh, I mean, it's it's actually weird how I'm in better contact more like with friends in New Zealand. Like we we we've been saying for years we must have you know monthly like catch ups, and we haven't done it. But then as soon as lockdown happened. Like for the last four months, we have a monthly catch up, you know, on on Zoom or wherever. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say the internet just for that to communicate, and um, and also just for stuff like um, to access Netflix and Amazon Prime, just like to binge in a box. I mean, I'm a bit of a TV geek, so you know, I can I can sort of uh, it's terrible, but I can almost sometimes sort of whole day just binging on a box set. Uh, you know, I sometimes got to like draw myself away from it. It's terrible. No, I, I agree. Like, I understand. I kind of like, uh, it's, you know, it's that kind of right time to binge. And what a great time to do it. I'm really kind of locked down. I'm being just like, well, no one's going to bother me for this. So, yeah, it's cool. And um, the internet, it, it's, it's very powerful. Um, do, you, do, you, do you, are you for masks or against masks? Or are you in between? Oh, this is controversial, isn't it? Um... I'd probably say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'd probably say I'm, I'm, I'm against. I mean, I see why they're doing it. I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, I think everybody's basically they don't know what they're dealing with in this virus. So, 
yeah. they, 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 they're trying to find a way to stop it. And I think, that, I mean, obviously they must make a, a difference. I don't know how much difference, but they must. I mean, obviously you're covering your face, but I mean, I had to go on a two hour train journey the other day with a mask and I mean, you, you're sweating inside there and yeah, I mean, I think I'm slightly against them. I, the other thing I worry about is, is where, are we going to be doing this in two years? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it just seems to be we, we, we're going down this way. I mean, yeah, we, 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 we're going down a funny road. I mean, I don't know if you saw in Melbourne. I mean, it's, it's slightly in the same topic, but they, 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 they have drones in Melbourne, like following people. And uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I, 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 for me, it's more from that point of view is like, where are we going? I mean, I, I think if they said to us, you know, you have to wear masks for a year, then fine, wear it for a year. But yeah, I, I do worry that, you know, we, we, we could do this continuously. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've got two little nieces. They, they're very young. They, the, the, the ones just over a year and the ones almost a year. And I just, I just, I don't, I don't want to wake up one day like well, in 10 years when they like almost teenagers and be telling them stories like, Oh, way back in the day, you know, we could go in a supermarket and not have to wear a mask. So yeah. I it, worry about that no, it, 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 it's so true because it's like it's, it, we come into a world where like yeah do we have to wear masks and also is it scientifically proven that we should be wearing masks for the right you know these reasons so at the moment it, it's not which is a bit scary because everyone's like i'm an alarming it's crazy um but thank god like we don't have to wear masks in pubs and certain venues um it's it and the world in a position where we've come out of, kind of locked down for the moment. Hopefully it's gonna be like that for a while. Um, it's great, I, I've noticed to see a lot of people be creative of where they're just sort of doing the live gigs, like in, you know, uh, I don't know, under bins or under trees next to bins and alleyways and parks, which is amazing and so Where is the most kind of like weirdest place you've ever done a, done a gig, like ever, generally? Oh, ever so like um so so not not necessarily online but just, yeah. just wherever yeah, i haven't i haven't i haven't done too many weird i mean i've i've, I've actually been quite lucky i mean i remember i did i, I did uh, i remember i did one like in, in 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 south london um i think the weirdest ones for me have always been you know you know, you know in the main area of a pub because you know most of the gigs we do uh are sort of they're, they're in pubs but that's in a separate room but I, I remember doing one, I think it was in Bow, and it was the main area of a pub. And 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 and, uh, and, and, and the audience were very uh, they were very chatty. They were very sort of heckly. And I remember I had this and it was a ten minute spot. I had all this material, I had my best material written up, but eventually I just I just disregarded it because they were they kept I kept on being interrupted. So it ended up just being uh, being a banter session. Which, which was good. I, I think it was good. Uh, it's good to have to learn how to deal with those distractions. And I think, I think that's where I sort of learned where I've become more of a, an interactive comic. Because when I first started, I was very much, I mean, obviously I was very, I, I had no background in performing at all. So I, I would very much just write my, my material and I wouldn't, I'd, I, 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 I used to fear hecklers. I think we all fear heckler. And I would just, you know, do my five minutes and that was that. Whereas doing these sort of gigs in main areas of a pub where they, the audience, they do just, they're constantly interrupting you. It gets you used to that sort of, you know, how to deal with those distractions. Yeah. And it's, it's so true. And I suppose like, it's supposed to be the good thing that I like gigs and people can just go on mute and can be like, well, that's okay. <laughs> that's yeah, definitely. And how do you get into comedy? How, what, was, was, what was that kind of, Next to you. Uh, how, oh, very okay. Uh, the short story is, uh, I basically years a year because I, I I did my first gig at the end of 2011. But how how I originally got into it was I, I did a at work there they offered us training on public speaking. So we right. had to day out of the office and and so it was a whole day on, on public speaking. And then the lady who was leading the training she said, what you need to do now is prepare five minutes and just you know, prepare a topic and talk about something. So I basically just talked about, I'd watched this movie on the Sunday night before with Russell Crowe. And I basically started the movie, the, the speech saying how I, 
how uh, how I actually enjoyed this movie despite not liking Russell Crowe and, and people <laughs> there were five people and they, and they laughed and then and then the lady even said to me oh like you 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 look like to me you look like a TV presenter giving a movie re review and I thought well I'd like to work with something like that so I thought of maybe doing something on YouTube where I review movies and maybe I could create a weird a wacky character and then I was also I was also reading like a lot of self help books about how to be like more socially engaging with people. And they said, go do an improv or a comedy course. And I'm like, what do people do? do are there courses where they teach you stand-up comedy? And uh, yeah, so I signed up and I, I Googled and I signed up and I did a stand-up comedy course for 10 weeks. And at the end you do a showcase. And then I did that and then I just carried on doing it. So yeah, that's, it was sort of by accident, but I think what I've realized, I think I've always wanted to perform in some way. I was very shy growing up. Like I was, I didn't like the spotlight, but I wanted to do it. And yeah, I've always realized, I think I've deep down, I've always wanted to do it. That's cool. And when you perform, you've got such a great energy. So I would let out, like, I'm nearly poor, but like, I would imagine you like that shy. Cause it's so like, like here, yeah, the energy is great. It's, it's really cool. Oh no, no, very like, uh, but particularly when I was younger, like, uh, yeah, like, like when, when, when guys are who I was at school with, see that I just stand up there like what really and uh, yeah they, I, mean, I mean I remember that I had an old schoolmate who actually came to one of my gigs and he was like he was like really like he even said I'm really surprised at that like I didn't I didn't think you had that in you so yeah that's so cool and it's it's, it's good to surprise people as well always good and when is have you got um since like easing of lockdown have you done sort of any live gigs the last few weeks, if you're going to think something out, I think you did a, did you do a park gig recently. Or? Yeah, I've, I've I've done two sort of um two sort of outdoor gigs um sort of like like in a in a in a, in a park in 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 Eastley. Uh, yeah, they were generally a okay. I mean, it w wasn't big crowds. It was mainly acts, but it was just good to get out. Uh, no. So yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't got anything planned. I mean, I'm looking. I mean, it, it's uh, it's quite difficult at the moment. I think they they few and far between. But yeah, just keep on looking, and hopefully, hopefully something comes up. And yeah, try and yeah. be innovative, I suppose. <laughs> it is. It, it's it's a crazy time that I think like so many of us, like comics and artists, we're all looking, and then we're like, well, what's going to happen in the next two, three weeks? It's just that kind of moment. It's it's a bit right in between kind of timing. Where where on social media can we find you? Is there a particular? Uh, Twitter and um, Twitter and Instagram are probably the best. The best uh, Twitter handle at Gareth Ball two thousand and three. Nice, cool, fantastic, and um, that's that's amazing. Um, well, we look forward to seeing you online and on live. Well, it's the long live circuit. Uh, thank you, Gareth, for coming along and chatting. Really cool. Thank you. Oh.